uh, talking about, John, some of the innovations we're seeing at the event. This is, of course, day one. We haven't had a chance yet to walk the floor other than our way in, but uh, there's a lot of exciting buzz around. Yeah, well, I walked the floor last night and uh, when no one was here because we were here late setting up, and I had a good chance to preview all the booths. And literally, it's all about the applications powering content. And content is king. Uh, cash is king. Content equals cash. Uh, it's creating a lot of business model disruption here at NAB, and I think ultimately what's happening is we have this developer market is, em is emerging that's not just for the large studios, Dave, but really for um, you know, every professional producer. You don't have to be super PhD in, in graphics and editing to do all the great stuff. And uh, Adobe, you guys have been part of that, David. So talk about uh, uh, CS 6.0 you're, you're talking about here at NAB. Uh, apps always take advantage of the new Moore's Law features, zillion cores, solid state memory, ECC memory, powerful workstations. What's, what's, your, what's your announcement? Well, here? at NAB this year, we, we think we've got the biggest release in 10 years of our suite of software. So Premiere Pro has been dramatically, um, the, the, the UI has been dramatically uh, changed by user feedback. So we're very happy to show that. After Effects has had un some unbelievable um, advancements. Again, a lot of people are looking at After Effects and thinking it's probably the biggest advancement in 10 years. So our booth is packed with people that want to see what's new. A lot of energy around Premiere Pro and uh, After Effects now. It's been great. What is the, I see Adobe's been a big staple in this market, all, you know, audio and video and across the board, but what is the big feedback? You said you listened to your customers yeah. and made some game changing or, or uh, ground changing announcements in the past 10 years for, for this announcement. What's the key things you've heard from them? Well, some of the new features in the product, again, are really user feedback. So the team that I run is in front of customers talking, you know, what is it that we could do to improve the software? We take that back to our engineers. Our engineers talk to Intel. And some of the features they came up with uh, that really just play out beautiful, we have a new feature called Never Stop Play, which is our third generation 64-bit sort of uh, environment with, uh, with Premiere Pro, where you can actually be editing in Premiere Pro watching your full screen output, jump over to Photoshop or jump into After Effects while the playback never stops. Look for files, do things that you need. Because remember, you might have a client previewing that output and they just want to sit and watch what you're doing. You might need to go hunt up another file while they're doing that on another monitor, but again, the same system. So that's one. Another thing that allows us to do that's a beautiful tie-in to Intel and our partnership that we've had for years, in this new 64-bit environment, we've got this opportunity to drag and drop effects live while that's playing. So the client might be sitting there watching what you're doing. Maybe you've got a Blackmagic or AJA or Matrox card to putting on the, the output. It's you know, a lot of bandwidth there. We can now uh, change effects parameters in real time. So the customer can ask you, well, can you warm that up a bit, cool it down a bit, and the playback never stops. So for the first time, we've enabled those cards to follow that mercury pipeline all the way through, and that's there because of the power and the partnership with Intel. Well, obviously, Intel's always been the leader in performance, and I, you know, I was saying earlier, I was at going back to Sundance, all these other in film, all the geeks doing doing graphics, no Intel's there. What did you guys do in particular? Can you be specific around how you re-architected uh, CS for the Xeon? So w can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I think when, you, when you're giving us the opportunity to have you know, dual socket currently and say in a, a box like the HP A20, which I've been using for a while, which is outstanding, I've got 32 threads that I can now deal with. So as I'm uh, changing those effects parameters, you know, I've got a lot more bandwidth to start stacking on even more effects. So you've just given us wider hallways and taller ceilings to do a lot more effects at the same time. It's been incredible. So you're not disrupting the workflow. You're using the existing workflow. You're yes. just making it incredibly <laughs> more productive. Absolutely. Right, allowing me to do many, many more things in real time and actually see the effects of the yeah. changes with a client, for example. Um, yeah, I, I agree 100%. W one of the things that's interesting from a client standpoint is we never fail in each release to sort of make everything work at the same speed, but let you do so much more. So if you went back to old workflows, everything would just be like in, in amazingly, blazingly fast speeds, but customers need to do more. We got to go to 4K, we got to go to 5K, need real time color correction on top of that. So while we come out with these amazing releases, Intel keeps coming out with these more and more threads, the customers, if they would, would sort of stick in the same workflows that they have now, 
they would just have incredible amounts of power. The problem is they're not sitting still. So they're counting on Intel and Adobe to go up that chain yeah, as yeah. resolutions get bigger and demands get bigger on content creation. It's kind of an interesting thing to it, see because you would think we would be doing 5K now. Right, but it is. But, but a real challenge for many software companies is to just not throw features and function at exactly. it that aren't utilized. You, you know, how, how do you guys manage that? And, and it's because it sounds like the things that you're talking about are going to get absorbed, they're going to get adopted, as opposed to having you know, bloatware that 90% I don't even touch well, as a user. We already touched on it, it's, it's customer feedback. So we don't want to put features in there that, that are sort of sexy looking, but don't play into their workflow. We cannot make their day faster, because time is money. And we always tell people, especially with these, with these new uh, processors, these new Xeon processors are incredible. It's like, if render times are an issue, it's, it's a slam dunk with our new Adobe Media Encoder uh, for CS6 that you just watch all those 32 threads hit and they can look at it and say, you know what, my current machine, which might be a dual six core or maybe a quad core, isn't giving me that kind of time on the output. So it's it's not something, there's no smoke and mirrors, it's time well, and money, it's all about very the productivity. simple. Yeah. I mean, right. Here at SiliconANGLE TV, we have theCUBE and we've been doing this for almost yeah. a year and a half and have amazing, millions of people have watched theCUBE. Um, you mentioned you know, bigger hallways to play with. Creativity around the media hackers, we call ourselves media hackers, because sure. you know, we're always trying to hack and do new things to engage the new user experience that people are demanding, mobile, social, yeah. et cetera. So, so that being said, I'm sure you agree with that, that there's new experiences that need to be created. Yeah. So what are you hearing from your users on the preview around the, the product, and can you point to any specific examples of like, wow, that's new stuff we've sure. seen from, from the product? Well, so some of the features that are, that are sort of standing out on the product, we have uh, brand new hover scrubbing, which allows us to move uh, you know, massive amounts of data in thumbnails. So if I happen to have, you know, I'm back on my server or I'm back on my local hard drive and I just want to start previewing information, when I hover scrub or just move over those, those files, not even clicking your mouse, that's hitting those Intel processors. When I have to decode 5K red files and you show them hover scrubbing just directly over that, they're like, that's 5K? Yeah, let me show you a little deeper so you can dive into it. They start looking at that and we'll bring up you know, the, the process manager and start showing them or the activity monitor on their Mac and show them how many threads are hitting. And they're just amazed that we're nailing all of those threads. So that's one thing. Another thing is we spend a lot of time on dynamic trimming. One of the things, say, that's been missing uh, from a competitor's product that we've kind of been thrown in this environment um, for, you know, from a customer like Apple you know, they were sort of, you know, missing a little bit of the trimming features that the customers coming to us said, you know, we really like what this other company does with trimming. What, do you, what can you guys tell us? So we call it dynamic trimming and it is drop dead gorgeous. It's very fast, completely keyboard driven. You can almost cut your mouse cord and toss your mouse and go for the keyboard, which is really what the high end user wants. So we're showing them keyboard driven um, uh, effects uh, controls where you can actually go in start putting in parameters, you can adjust frames with your keyboard. Again, it, it's just something that Premiere has usually in the past been very mouse driven. It this release is all about customer feature set and they wanted the keyboard. And that's, that's about precision. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so so if, if your customers aren't standing still, Adobe isn't standing still. So what are you guys going to do next? I mean, obviously you're going to promote the heck out of CS and get it in, into the market and tweak it and do all the normal product stuff that you do. But like, like what's next for you guys? Where's the moonshot? Well, shot? I mean, what's it's interesting vision? for us because we really do look at, at partners like, uh, like Intel and we look at partners, say, like HP with this new Z1, which is this workstation where you can put a, uh, you know, a lot of high power, a lot of juice in there, whether it's on CPU or GPU or memory, whatever it is. So we're looking at technology to figure out how can we sort of carry this forward. Like what can we look at next in the future for the CS product? What is technology? How can we make sure we've timed it out? And I'll tell you, Thunderbolt for me is one of the most exciting things to happen in a long time. We're in lockstep with Intel on Thunderbolt. Uh, I do a lot of Thunderbolt uh, blogs myself. So I'm out there uh, really talking to uh, Thunderbolt and what it means for the workflow. You've got customers uh, that are you know, really wanting these little tiny Thunderbolt drives that they can, this thing moves you know, 500 a second or 700 on the read. It's pretty amazing how tiny that thing is. The lightning is. bolt on so it. Yeah, yep, that's Thunderbolt. That's we the know. new we, we, pocket drive by, uh, yeah. by yeah. Promise. We, always, we, we go to Ben you saying, you know, 
sent a disk on yeah. USB 2.0. Yeah, so the transfer this is fast it's in the amazingly <laughs> fast. So, okay. so we go back to looking at technology. What do customers want? They want faster backups. At the end of the day, they want to be in Premiere. They've done their edit. Move it over to here because I want to get this thing off my computer and in my safe. So Thunderbolt that Intel's working on, this new 30-meter uh, cable, are you kidding me? You know how exciting that is for a studio like this? Mm. I could be having Thunderbolt, you know, almost 100 feet away and have all that technology. So for us, we're looking at that technology, making sure that we are what people think of from an NLE when they think of Thunderbolt. David Helmley, Thunderbolt is part of it. Innovations in the creative minds out there, building the next products for the next user experiences. Thanks for coming inside the Cube. Thanks for having me. Thanks I'm, for a, having I'm a Cube right fan. Thank Great you. Great to meet you, David. You're a Cube alumni officially <laughs> now. Uh, <laughs> Join the ranks of over 500 Cube alums, uh, from CEOs to entrepreneurs. We'll be right back with from SiliconANGLE.TV, the Cube, right after this short break with our next guest.